hello everybody happy saturday welcome back to the channel please excuse my voice i have been ill with the dreaded lager lurgy as they call it but getting better now so here we go another story from the reluctant adult a book for the perpetually overwhelmed this one's called overwhelmingly overwhelmed once there was a girl the girl couldn't wait to grow up so she could make her own decisions she wanted to eat sweets for breakfast and go to bed at midnight. She wanted to play My Little Ponies all day and see her friends whenever she liked. She wanted to be in a girl band and dye her hair pink. And she wanted her own swimming pool, a unicorn and three billion pounds in cash. It wasn't much to ask. The grown-ups told her that she was silly to want to grow up because apparently being a kid is the best time of your life. She thought they were lying because they'd chosen to live boring, sad, pathetic lives. So she made a promise to herself. When she was a grown-up, she wasn't going to be boring or sad or pathetic. Instead, she was going to be mad and wild and fun. Life was going to be a 24-7 party, and no one was going to stop her. Three decades later, the girl woke up one morning and realised that her life wasn't quite what she had envisioned all those years ago. She had just done what everyone else had done. Got a job, got a mortgage, got married, had two kids. And although she was very grateful for her life and loved her family immeasurably, she realised that adulthood wasn't quite as great as it as it had been cracked up to be. Oh, pardon me. My voice is going. There never seemed to be time to have fun. It was basically just doing mundane stuff all the time. And the mundane stuff never seemed to end. It just went on and on and on. She was constantly stressed. She was constantly tired. She was constantly struggling to stay afloat. She had so many things on her to-do list, note the plural, that she could hardly see the chicken for the chicken nuggets. She didn't even have the brain cells to think of an analogy that made sense. It seemed that so much was expected of her. She was meant to pay bills and keep on top of laundry. She was meant to go to the gym and have an interesting hobby like wakeboarding. She was meant to have a car that wasn't full of old apple cores, party bags and happy meal boxes. She was meant to look stylish in an effortless way. She was meant to have expensive kin care routine and look younger than she really was. She was meant to be funny on social media without looking like she was trying too hard. She was meant to live life to the fullest and travel to interesting places and also have sensible investments in a pension plan. She was supposed to run long distances for charity, make banana bread when the bananas went round, and volunteer for good causes. She was meant to help out on school field trips and be on the PTA. She was meant to maintain a successful career between the hours of 9am and 3pm, while whilst also walking and playing with the dog, who was bonkers. She was meant to care about the planet and recycle and go plastic-free and sponsor orangutans. She was opposed to know all about politics and be an interesting conv conversationalist at dinner parties. She was supposed to be fun and go out dancing and also be mature enough to say no to tequila and not end up puking in the taxi on the way home. She was meant to refrain from drinking during the week and find dry January easy. She was supposed to enjoy playing with her children and be a nice calm parent who didn't scream, Just get your bloody shoes on! at them every morning before school. She's supposed to like watching Newsnight and doing difficult crosswords. She was supposed to have watched 20 billion episodes of all the most popular Netflix series because that's all anyone ever talked about anymore. She was supposed to support independent businesses and not just buy everything with one click on Amazon Prime. She was meant to eat free-range and organic. She was meant to get her nails shellacked more than once every three years. She was meant to remember to charge her phone and reply to text messages and emails and WhatsApps. She was meant to try and not say fuck so much. She was meant to try and give up meat and preferably go vegan because she loved animals. But the problem was that sometimes the world seemed too bleak and boring and full of admin and just doing the same old shit day in, day out, that she just thought, Could I really do this out <laughs> without camembert and brie? Could I really be expected to do all of this without bacon? The answer was no. Sorry, pigs. And then one day, even with the bacon, it all became too, too much. So she clicked her slippers together, which were actual slippers, not pointy spangly red things like Dorothy wore, because she hasn't been able to walk in heels since 2004. And she said, No way! I'm drowning here. I cannot do this. I do not want to be an adult any more. When she finally fell asleep that night, which was at 4am, because she was also an anxiety-ridden insomniac, a fairy godmother came to her in her dreams. The fairy was wise and told her, you may not want to be an adult, but you can't go back to being a child again. And even if you could, you wouldn't like it. 
Things have changed so much. They made my little ponies into equestria girls, which is like some sort of hideous human-horse hybrid thing. It's wrong on so many levels, but listen, I digress. You're beating yourself up too much. No one is perfect, and no one is getting everything right. It's humanly impossible. Everyone is just trying the best they can, and doing two or three of the things on your list. That's it. And the girl said to the fairy, What? So I clear out the Happy Meal box from the car, bake some banana bread and sponsor an orangutan, then all my problems will be solved? The fairy grew impatient with the girl and said, Stop being so pedantic! The girl apologised. I'm sorry, fairy, I know you're right. It's just that when I look at Instagram, it seems like everyone else is coping so well. They all have well-behaved, stylish children, go on amazing holidays, and have fabulous houses with fancy velvet accent chairs, and... The fairy was really starting to lose her patience now. Instagram is a, ba a big bag of shite, you stupid. <laughs> Name me one person in real life who's holding everything together. Uh, Helen from number 37. Helen is having an affair with her boss. She drinks 14 cups of coffee a day. She screams at her children every single morning before school. She has Botox and fillers. She only pretends to go to the gym. She hasn't vacuumed under the beds for three years. And last night, she delivered is that a verb yet? Because it should be. KFC for the family dinner. Oh, I didn't know. No, you wouldn't know, would you? Because you think life revolves around having a fancy velvet accent chair, don't you? Uh, no. Don't lie to me. I saw you. You spent three hours last night looking up velvet accent chairs. Yet still you complain that you have so much to do and no time to do it. Have you ever thought that if you didn't waste so much time on your godforsaken phone, then perhaps you'd be coping a little better? And with that, the fairy disappeared in a puff of smoke, which was a good thing because the girl had just started to develop an intense dislike of the fairy because she knew the fairy was right, and it was very annoying. But over the next few days, the girl thought about what the fairy had said, and she spent less time lusting over the other people's lives on social media and looked about the actual real world. She realised that not everyone was perfect and not everyone was coping, and in time she began to feel much better about her own imperfect yet sometimes ruddy, wonderful life. And thus it turned out that an expensive velvet accent chair was not the key to everlasting happiness after all. The end. Although in the interest of full disclosure, she did in fact buy a fancy velvet accent chair anyway, because she thought, <laughs> because although it cost the same amount as a small horse, it really did look bloody good on Instagram. The end. Don't forget to like and subscribe and press the wee bell notification, and a huge big thank you to all my subscribers, patrons and members. See you next week. Bye bye.